Uh, what we are doing is uh, something really great. So I will show you in the next 10 minutes how easy it is to onboard. So I will connect a totally new machine to Mindsphere within 10 minutes. Uh, but for the start, uh, what are we using for this? It's really easy. We are using everything what we have in mind. So we're using a connectivity element. We're using the MindSphere itself. We're using an app to see later the data arriving really in MindSphere live from my little uh, demo case here. So um, one of the most important things when you onboard something is having a good connectivity device or a connectivity possibility. For this, we have here three different lines. So the one is we are offering in MindSphere a, a library or the direct connection to the API or uh, a software to connect to MindSphere. We are offering Siemens devices are already able to send data to MindSphere, like a Cinemeric or a S7-1500. But for this demonstration, I'm using one of the standard gateways. And you see this called MindConnect Nano. This is the big one here, the Nanobox. And it is really, really easy. And there are this sentence in the main focus. It is easy, it changes, it's easy and fast. Yeah? So you will not see any other competitors doing this in this, uh, in this time. In 10 minutes, we have this online with all the data we need. Um, three steps. Step one, connect the machine. Step two, configure the machine. Step three, ready to go. And we can start to create value with the data what we have then in Mindsphere. OK, so we have the machine here. This is a little, let's say, a little plant. Uh, what we have here is uh, a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor and a little uh, potty here. So this is the simulation uh, of a real machine. And we have here a control system. What is, in this case, a S7-S300? Could be also a non-Siemens device, but this is a Siemens uh, uh, demo case, so I choose a Siemens device. So. But what is missing, and you see this here, is the connectivity element. Yeah? There is a big space, and when you need it, you order it. And this is easy, then you get a package um, I have the package here, the Siemens package. Oh, this is nice. Let's go inside what we have here in a connectivity device. Yeah, well, uh, come on. It is my little MindConnect Nano. Nice. Yes. So, and what comes also with the package is not only the device, it's also a description how to do it. Um, can, I can give you this. You can uh, look at it. This is a real nice industry device. And as I said, it comes also with a description. As you know, maybe from your um, router at home, when you are setting up your router, your private router, you have about 20 or 30 pages of PowerPoint, and it's telling you what you have to do. In MindSphere, it's much easier. You see, we have only one page, one single page. And only the one side of the page is important. Let's see what I have to do to set up this on MindSphere. Um, I need uh, to mount it on my, on my machine. What I need is power. Yeah, power, sure, power. Uh, ah, and we are talking about a cloud. We need internet. And this is exactly what we're doing now. Uh, can I have my device back? Thanks. This is exactly what we're doing now. I will mount it. I will put it on my device here. Let's see. Mount it here. Then we need power. Here's the power. We need the internal network to the machine. We want to collect data there. And what we need is also here the internet. Then we switch it on. And what you see here is exactly what you have to do on-site in your real machine, nothing else. This is what you have to do on-site. The rest we are doing now online, directly on MindSphere. So in this case, we are going online, and we are watching here what we have. So we have here the launchpad of MindSphere, and what we need to set up a new machine is the AOD data modeler. You have to tell the MindSphere, there is a new machine I want to connect, there are datas I want to I want to see in MindSphere. So we click on the IoT data model. And now let's see. You have here the possibility to create customers. You have the possibility to create users. But we want to create a new machine. In this case, uh, I already prepared the machine. It's, it's one of my customers here is Siemens HE. And this box called Mind Connect, uh, Mind Demo, MS Demo Compact number nine. So there are three steps to set up the system. Step number one, give it um, the basic information, like what is the name of the demo or the machine, 
asset type a little bit. You can freely type in everything what you want. Uh, you can even upload a picture. You can say, this is in, uh, in Nuremberg here, in the message centrum. Um, everything really easy. So then step number two. You have to say, what is the connectivity element? As I described, we have different kind of con con connectivity elements. We choose here the Mind Connect Nano. So I choose here asset type Mind Connect Nano. And inside, there are some steps to do. Step number one is here. Every box has a unique identification number. You type it in. You see here, only one line. Type it in, and you're set. Then say, what is the IP address of the box inside of the machine? Here is what is the way to the internet. So you can have a fixed IP address, or you're choosing the DHCP, what I choose here, because we are using here the normal fair, um, internet uh, access. And then now, most important, you have to decide what data I want to collect. As we have here only three data points. We have here, as I said, a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, and a potty, so three data points. And I'm opening an aspect, what is nothing else than, a, let's say, a sensible combination of data points. And we have here, as you see here, the pressure, temperature, and potty. And um, you see, if I create a new one, I don't have a new one, but I could create really easy a new one. Only two fields are really required, the name and then uh, the address and uh, the data format. Is it a Boolean? So is it a yes or no? Or is it a uh, temperature? What do we <coughs> have then a real or a float? So let's cancel this. We have it already in. And you have to decide what are the cycle time I need. So it depends on the use case what you're using. So if you say, I want to know the temperature of the whole day in this room. And maybe I'm collecting it every, every hour. This is enough for me. Then you can do this. But here in the presentation, I choose one second. You, you see you have other possibilities. I want to have a cycle time of one second because I want to touch it right now. And I want to show you that it's really sending data from here, from stage in MindSphere. So in this case, we chose one second. We save it. I already saved it uh, in the last presentation. And you're set. So this is exactly. What do you have to do? Nothing else. Now we are connected. Ah, I, one step we have to do. And the step is we go back to our, present, to our picture. We have to wait a little, because now you see it's not connected at the moment. But now we are waiting a little bit. Yes, now blinking. This is a good sign. It's getting green. Yes, it's getting green. And it is solid green. It is online. Yes, solid green is online. So and let's see if the real world is also online. Yeah, real world is also online. Now we are collecting live here on stage to MindSphere data, and we can Again, go back to MindSphere and see this. For this, we are using one of the standard components. What we have in MindSphere It's called the Fleet man Manager that comes with MindSphere. When you are having MindSphere, you have this as a free tool already integrated to see data arriving. So you see, again, a lot of demo cases. We have 114 demo cases uh, on the tenant. Um, we are looking here in uh, Nuremberg. Oh, this is not Nuremberg. Here is Nuremberg. No, this is also not Nuremberg. Where is Nuremberg? Here, Germany, Nuremberg. So then we see here is the fairground. Uh, here is the Frankenhalle. And here is exactly my asset. So this is, as I said, you see here MS Demo Compact number 9. We click on MS Demo Compact number 9. And now we can uh, look in the aspect. And the aspect is now it shows me uh, all the data. So here I have. Uh, the data from the SPS. And you see data arriving. If I want to see it a little bit more in detail, clicking here on the visual analyzer, what is the additional tool to dive a little bit into the data. And you can then uh, zoom in here. Let's go really inside of this demo with all the data what we have here. So, OK. Closer. So, now. You see the data. And if everything runs, then we can now influence here a little bit the, the curves by increasing the temperature. I hold here the temperature sensor. It will increase here. What do you have here? 25, 26, 27. If it's more than 40, you should tell me. Huh? Then I have to go to the doctor. Then we have to change a little bit the pressure here or the potty. And some seconds later, you will see the results here in mines here. So, but oh, you see here the results already. So I increased here the temperature with my what, what was the peak. And now you see, again, the temperature goes down because I left it. The pressure is uh, also yeah, 29. Um, I 
and you see here the potty and also the pressure sensor. So this is really something hands-on, easy to do. And now you say, I have now the data. What I am doing with this data? I can now create a rule. And this is also easy, creating a rule what tells me if the next time the temperature rises more than 25, for example, then something should happen. So we're creating a rule live here, clicking on the rule engine. Uh, I need a new rule for my demo here, so we'll create a new one. Um, I will choose now here on stage uh, the sensor, temperature sensor. Here's the temperature sensor. What I'm doing is here step number two. I'm say if the temperature sensor greater than, let's say, 25 degrees, that's important, because then it's really hot here on the, on, uh, on the booth, then we are say, OK, what should happen? This is an urgent, an urgent case. Uh, what is the description? Uh, too hot on stage. Uh, what is the action? The action could be, um, what is it? Get a drink. And then step number five. Now, one of our uh, colleagues, they are giving us the water. Maybe I have the email address. I put in the email address here, give it a name, and save it. And the next time, when I'm choosing now here the temperature sensor and the, the threshold was uh, set, then this will automatically email to my colleague an email and says, please come and bring the guy on stage a, a drink. But you can use this for everything. Eh? You can say, if the, we have here a temperature on a bearing or something like this, uh, there should come a technician and help you to repair this before it occurs to an unplanned downtime. And this is exactly the way, how easy it is, and how you can use it. Really simple, within 10 minutes. This is mainly what I can show, um, how it is how it goes. And if you have more questions, I'm standing in the, in the background here on the, on the app uh, part. If you have questions, come over and uh, ask me.